All right, Shalom. I'm out here once again to preach and to prophesy unto my people, being you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. According to the Holy Bible, you are the biblical Israelites. This is according to paternal and agnet relations. Your nationality, your race, is determined off of your father's genetic line. And seeing our people have been dispersed all throughout the earth, we look like all nations under the sun. So if you hear this word and it resonates with your spirit in its entirety, that is because you are indeed an Israelite. You go back to the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We also come out here to preach and to prophesy unto you other nations as well about what's coming for you. Salvation is for the nation of Israel. Damnation is for you heathen. Okay? So as always, before I get started, I have to give all thanks and praises unto our power, the power of Israel, not the power of any other nation. He's not dealing with you other nations. Okay? What is his name? Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Wavrakapudas. Peace, blessings, much respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, on down to the rest of the elders who rule well within Israel. Salutations to the hopeful elect throughout the four corners of this whole entire earth, no matter where, whom they may be, or what they may look like, pushing out this purified truth to the rest of the church who believe as well. You men who may not be teachers or prophets, you women, sons, and daughters also. And the water to Yahweh Shai, because without him enduring and going to that cross for the nation of Israel, and the nation of Israel alone, none of this would even be possible whatsoever. Okay? This is the book of Exodus. Chapter 15 and verse 1. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord and spake saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. So the old song that our people used to sing was going into our great deliverance out of the land of Egypt, out of Pharaoh's hands. Okay? Now we come out here we're still singing a song unto you, but we're not necessarily singing that song. That was the old song. But although that was the old song, it's not to be forgotten. That great deliverance that Yahweh Bashami Awashai did to our forefathers and our foremothers is not to be forgotten. Okay? Let's read this again. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 1. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord and spake saying, I will sing unto the Lord for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. And the Lord did that for us. The Lord overthrew Pharaoh and his army for our sake. And it was a great deliverance. So great that all throughout this earth, people have heard about this story, which is found within the Bible. And when you look in this Bible, you're not reading some made up novel. This is our history. These are true events that have actually happened and things to come, things coming in the future. 
This is a living book. And we are singing lyrics unto you from this living book. Verse two, the Lord is my strength and song. And he has become my salvation. He is my power. And I will prepare him a habitation. My father's power. And I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his hosts hath he cast into the sea. His chosen captains also are drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They have sank into the bottom as a stone. So the Lord did that for us. He overthrew Pharaoh and his army for us. And it was a great miracle. When the Heavenly Father, Yahweh split the Red Sea for us, when we walked on that ground, it was completely dry, man. And when Pharaoh and his army came pursuing after our people, the Lord allowed that water, which was once split, to come together, crash together like a hand clap, and totally consume Pharaoh and his army. He did that for his people. And that's the song that we still sing. That's the song that we still acknowledge. Now we're coming into a time where the Lord is going to bring another great deliverance in the land of Egypt. And Babylon, AKA America, is also modern day Egypt, okay? So seeing that we come out here as a musician, as someone who's singing a song unto you, most people cannot comprehend it. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Chapter 4 and verse 9. For I think that the power had set for us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. When you go into that word spectacle in Greek 2302, the word is theatron. And what's that sound like? It sounds like theater. Okay? Going into definition, a theater, a place in which games and dramatic spectacles are exhibited and public assemblies held. For the Greeks use the theater also as a form, a public show, metaphorically a man who is exhibited to be gazed at and made sport of. So we're out here as a public show. We're out here being gazed at. People make sport of us. So as we come out here and we sing unto you, we sing the old and the new song. We sing the old song referencing the great deliverance that Yahweh had done for our people back in the time of ancient Egypt. Now we're singing the new song unto you about the new destruction that's to come. Okay? We're singing the new song unto you telling you to repent, come back to your nationality. Okay? Know who you are. Salvation is near. We're bringing you lyrics from the Bible, man. Because these words, the words of Yahweh by Shemiah was shy, this should be music to your ears. If you are of the elect, this truth is music to your ears, man. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 9. For I think that the power had set forth us, the apostles, last. So when you're an apostle, what does that mean? That means you're sent forth. The men of the Lord have been sent forth to come out here and teach this word as messengers. Okay, messengers of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Okay? Or ambassadors, if you will. As it were appointed to death. 
for we are made a spectacle unto the world, to angels and to men. So we're being gazed upon by man. We're being gazed upon by angels. Before my lesson, I had got on foot of the chariot hovering through the sky. Okay? We're being gazed upon. We're being observed, man. And we come out here performing, singing unto you. And if you are of the elect, you are going to hearken. But if you are not of the elect, you are not going to dance to this tune because it is not for you. Just like for the majority of Israelites, although we made all music except death metal, right? If you took certain Israelites from what they would deem an urban community and they go to a country western bar, they might not be feeling the music like that because it's not really for them. Well, this tune, it's only for the ears of the elect of the nation of Israel. Okay? Let's move forward to Jeremiah. Chapter 23 and verse 7. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. So that's the old song, singing about our deliverance from ancient Egypt. Well, the time we're in now, we're singing the new song, okay? Verse 8, but the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries whither I had driven them and they shall dwell in their own land. So now we're in the land of the north and other countries all throughout the earth. Our people have been dispersed. But America, primarily the land of the north, this is modern day Egypt. So when Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai sends Yahweh Shai to deliver his elect, this new deliverance is going to outshine the old deliverance. But even with that being said, we're still going to reference and sing the old song as we still do. We still talk about it. But this new deliverance that is coming is going to make that deliverance look as if it never happened. Okay? That's how great it's going to be. So we're going to sing about how the Lord delivered us from new Egypt, from modern day Egypt. The same way we sang that old song how he delivered us from ancient Egypt. And that goes to show you that there's nothing new under the sun. Okay? But the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, speaking of Babylon. And from all the countries whether I have driven them and they, shall and they shall dwell in their own land. And that's what we're looking forward to, getting our land back because you have perpetrators in our land claiming to be us. And Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai did not put them there himself by deliverance. Now, yeah, the steps of man is ordered by Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, but according to the scriptures, when we get our land back, it would be through a great deliverance, not through us placing ourselves there. Okay? Psalms 149. In verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of the saints. 
So what is the congregation of the saints or, or the assembly? Who are the saints? The saints are Israelites, but it starts with the believers of the Israelites. Those who are calling themselves Israelites. Those who are serving Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Okay? Those are the saints. And within the saints, you are going to see individuals singing that new song, dancing to the tune of that new song, while everybody else, they may not get down with that tune because it's not for them. This is a specific sound for your spiritual ears, not your physical ears, okay? Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of the saints. So when we bring out these scriptures, when we bring out these different proverbs, right? We're actually reading lyrics unto you. Our people, the nation of Israel, we're a very musical people. A lot of our people love making music, love listening to music. Okay, if you ask me, I think music is very, very important just as what you're listening to is important. You have to be careful what you're taking in on a consistent basis. That's why Esau uses this music to destroy the minds of our people. But that fire has spread into the communities of these heathen as well. Okay, it backfired. Because the curses that have been placed on our people have been placed upon these heathen as well. All right? It's beautiful seeing these chariots out. So as we come out here as a spectacle, as something for people to gaze upon, the angels gaze upon us, we're being observed, we're singing lyrics unto you but the thing is the majority of people are not going to dance okay verse 2 let Israel rejoice in him that made him let the children of Zion be joyful in their king let them praise his name in the dance let them sing praises unto him with timbrel and harp. So it starts spiritually first. When we come out here and bring out this word, this is like us performing unto you, singing unto you, okay? You can only imagine in the kingdom of heaven how much music is going to be created, how much we're going to enjoy music in its purest form, praising Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai having beautiful voices, right? Right now we're singing unto you by reading the scriptures to you. This is our way of performing unto you. We're basically a show unto you people. In a way, we are your entertainment, okay? For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people who are Israelites. He will beautify the meek with salvation. So the meek are going to be made glorified through Yahweh Shai. Okay, verse 5. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. So the saints are going to be exalted. And we're going to sing upon our beds in the kingdom. It's going to be perfect harmony, okay? We're not going to be all sad and miserable like we are in this kingdom at times, okay? But the spirit of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is what's keeping us going right now. Got another chariot. Multiple more. So in the kingdom, we're really going to be singing. 
sounds of joy, songs of, of, a, of a joyful sound, just beautiful music, right? Music that will make tears come out of your eyes, tears of joy. Right now, we're singing to you by reading these scriptures, man. And the majority of people within the nation of Israel, because it's for y'all, you're not singing to this melody. You don't care. Okay? We telling you, hey, hit the dance floor. Hey, have some fun. You're leaning against the wall with your arms crossed. You know, like those guys, if you ever go, if you've ever gone out to a club, you know me, I ain't gone out to a club in years, man. But you would go out and you want to have fun. And you always got those guys on the sideline, you know, standing against the wall with their arms crossed, mugging everybody, right? Here it is, all the women, all the honeys is on the dance floor trying to have fun. But then you got Tyrone and Day Day on the sideline looking for a problem. We come out here, we're, we're giving you this music. And you Israelites are on the sideline just looking for a problem. You're not trying to sing and dance to this tune because this tune is not for your ears. This tune is only for the elect of the nation of Israel. And in the kingdom, as I've stated before, we're really going to be singing this tune about how the Lord delivered us out of this captivity because it is yet to happen, but we know it is going to happen. And the fact that we're bringing it out, we're already singing it, okay? Through our belief, okay? This is Psalms. You know what? Let's go to Revelations. Revelations chapter 14. This is Revelations chapter 14, and I'm going to start at verse 3. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. So only the 144,000 can receive this ministry. Only the 144,000 are the ones who can um, you know basically buy this tune, receive this tune. The scriptures tell you, I think it's number not numbers. What is that? Let me see if I can find it right quick. Give me a moment. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 22. Excuse me. This is Proverbs 24 and verse 7. Wisdom is too high for a fool. He openeth not his mouth in the gate. So this tomb which is this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding is too high for a fool. So seeing that this wisdom is too high for a fool, they're not going to be able to be redeemed seeing that they can't dance to this tune. They can't even redeem the, the tune, so to speak. They can't even purchase the tune. This tune, this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding is too high for a fool's mind. 
So going back to Revelations 14 in verse 3. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders and no man could learn that song. But the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. When you go into that word redeemed, the word is in Greek 59, the word is agor, agorazo, to be in the marketplace, to attend it, to do business there, buy or sell of idle, <coughs> of idle people, to haunt the marketplace, lounge there. From Greek 58, properly to go to market, that is, to purchase, specifically to redeem, buy, redeem. So the elect are going to be purchased. How were the elect purchased? Through the blood of Yahweh Shai. So seeing that the elect were purchased, okay, we're able to receive that new song and dance to it, okay? The rest of you Israelites, you, you, can't, ob you can't observe the time that we're in. You can't afford this tune, seeing that you weren't even bought or redeemed, so to speak, anyway. This tune was only given to the elect, primarily the elite of the elect, being 144,000, which are the ones who come out here and do this work, okay? The man who come out here and teach you the words of Yahweh by Shemiah was shy, okay? They've been redeemed through Yahweh Shai's blood and they are able to obtain this truth. But this truth, this wisdom is way too high for a fool seeing that they can't redeem it. They can't purchase it. But the elect have been redeemed through the blood of Yahweh Shai. And seeing they've been redeemed through the blood of Yahweh Shai, they're also able to receive this song, dance to the rhythm, sing on cue. Sing and not only sing on cue, dance on beat. Okay? So we are out here performing in front of all these different people and we get rejected, we get hated on. Certain people might respect what we do. You get all sort of different feelings. Okay? Verse 4, these are they which were not defiled with women. And this isn't speaking of men being literal virgins. This is going into different philosophies. Different philosophies are likened unto women. Even this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding is likened unto a woman. Okay? And I believe going into the word uh, wisdom in the Greek, I believe that word is Sophia. Sophia is a feminine name okay so we're not defiled with any other woman the only woman we're caressing and making love to is this knowledge wisdom and understanding okay we're not putting our faith and hope in any other true uh not any other true because there is no any other true but any other doctrine who this world deems as true the only doctrine that we bring out, the only doctrine that we teach and believe on is the doctrine found within the Holy Bible. We're not defiled with all these different philosophies that you people get caught up in, okay? And there are many stumbling blocks in which our people fall casualty to. These are they, speaking of the 144,000, they who are able to... Um, sing that song right these are they which were not defiled with women for they are virgins these are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth these were redeemed from among men being the first fruits unto the power 
and unto the Lamb. So the elect, the 144,000 elect, are the first fruits. Okay? Ezekiel. You know what? Let's go back to uh, the book of Psalms. This is Psalms chapter 49. This is Psalms chapter 49 and verse 4. I will incline mine ear to a parable. I will open my dark saying upon the harp. So these dark sayings, where are they found? They're found within the scriptures. Let me hold that. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 4. To give subtility to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. Hear what? The scriptures. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. So the dark sayings are found within this Bible. Psalms 49 and 4. I will incline my ear to a parable. I will open my dark saying upon the harp. Okay? So we're singing this song unto you. We're singing this dark saying unto you spiritually. Okay? When you go back to the time of these words actually being written, Men would actually sing. Okay? King David actually did play a harp. And he would sing. We're out here singing when we bring out this word. Just because we're not harmonizing the words of the Lord. Or because we don't have some instrumental or a band playing in the background does not take away that we are singing these dark sayings unto you. We're breaking down these words unto you. We are performing for you. And a lot of you, you're just not interested because it's not for you. Just like if you was to turn on some death metal, some black metal, some heavy metal, I don't rock with that shit. That ain't going to move me. If anything, I'm going to want to go somewhere else. Well, this truth, that's how the majority of people treat it. Because it's not for them. It's for the elect out there. And it starts with the men of Israel. The men being the leaders. All right? I will incline mine ear to a parable. I will open my dark saying upon the heart. Now we're going to go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33. This is Ezekiel, chapter 33, and verse 32. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well of an instrument for they hear thy words but they do them not so many of our people they may act like they're listening to us they may say edifying video nice video fire video but then throughout their day-to-day -day life, they're not doing anything that the scriptures say. They're not living this life. They're just being cheerleaders. Sideline uh, deceivers, man. Acting as if they're partakers in this ministry and they're not. You have a lot of fakers, man. You being a cheerleader 
does not benefit us and it doesn't benefit you. We're singing this song in hopes that people actually dance to the tune. How do you dance to the tune? By actually living what's being taught out the Bible. Okay? And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that has a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. So although we're unto you as a lovely song, you hear our voice, but you're not listening. You might say, Shalom, Shalom, good video, good lesson, but you're not doing anything. You're not deceiving us. You're not deceiving Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. You're deceiving yourselves. Okay? As much as we come out here and sing this beautiful song unto you, be in the Bible, be in the words found within the Bible, we understand the majority of you, you're full of ish like a catfish. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come, then shall they know that a prophet had been among them. Okay, so a lot of our people perpetrate like they're about this ministry. They perpetrate like they're down with Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. And they're a bunch of frauds and hypocrites, man. And they're not getting down with this tune. Okay? Ephesians. Ephesians chapter, chapter 5 and verse 17. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So when we come out here, we're singing unto you, spiritual songs and the majority of you what are you not doing you're not dancing and the greatest example that I could try to come up with to explain this is imagine listening to the cha-cha slide okay he's literally explaining in the song what to do you got the beat on and the lyrics are literally telling you what to do but instead of doing what the lyrics are telling you to do. You're on the sideline with your arms crossed. You're sitting down in a chair. You're not even bobbing your head to the rhythm. You're not doing anything. So Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is going to kick y'all's asses out the setting. He going to get you out of here. He going to send a bodyguard to come get you out of here, a.k.a. an angel, to put your ass to death, man. Because you are taking up space. You're not dancing to the tune. Why are you here? You're a vibe killer. Right? So just like at a concert, if you're performing on stage and you see that the crowd is dead, and you're doing everything in your power to try to get that crowd to move, fuck that crowd. That's how you're going to feel. And that crowd is symbolizing the two-thirds of the nation of Israel who have already been written to be destroyed, however it may come. The elect have already been written to be delivered. Okay? Ephesians 5 and 19 again. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So we got to meditate on these scriptures. We have to meditate on this song day and night. When we come out here bringing out these scriptures, 
or singing unto you. Okay? Now, whether you hear or forbear, whether you're actually dancing to the melody, dancing to the groove, well, that's, that's not on us. We're doing our part, though. And it's on y'all to do y'all's part. This is Isaiah chapter 12 and verse 2. Behold, the power is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Yahweh is my strength and my song. He has also become my salvation. So Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai is our melody. He is our song. That's the song we are singing. We are singing his words. Okay? The simple fact that we're bringing out the Bible, that determines whether or not we're singing his song or we're just making up lyrics. Okay? The lyrics are already written in the Bible. And we're bringing those lyrics out to you. It says, again, Behold, the power is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. So we have to trust in Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. If you don't have the spirit of boldness, that's because you don't trust in the Lord. If you lack confidence, that's because you don't trust in the Lord. That's what that means. Men come out here in the spirit of boldness because of our trust in the Lord. Matter of fact, hold that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, and verse 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. So a righteous man will be in the spirit of boldness if he has confidence and trust in Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai. If you don't put your confidence and your trust in Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, well, don't, don't expect things to go well for you. Don't expect the Lord to work for you. Okay? Because he's not. All right? Without faith, it is impossible to please Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord Yahweh is my strength and my song. He has also become my salvation. So Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is our song. So with saying that, let's go back to Exodus 15 and 1. 15 and verse 2. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my power, and I will prepare him in habitation. My father's power. And I will exalt him. So Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is our song. And the words written within the scriptures, that's where you're going to find it at, man. Okay? You ain't going to find this song listening to, um, I can't even really tell you what rappers is popular today. Because honestly, most music I listen to is old music, man. I listen to a lot of just older music in general. But any of these artists that come out today, hell, even older music. If you're not if you're not speaking on the scriptures, it's not the real song, man. If a song that you're listening to isn't feeding your spirit, it's really not benefiting you. Okay? And me, I like music. I'm a I'm a very passionate man when it comes to music. That's a very big piece of my life, I would say. I love music. Okay, in fact, back in the world, I thought that's what I was going to do. I used to make beats, and I would rap to my own beats. Not to bring up my past, but just speaking on it, you know, because we all come from similar backgrounds. You know, so we're an example unto each other. But back in the world, I would make beats and then I would rap to them. I could literally have a CD 
at that time, because I ain't made music in so long, I used to put them on CDs or a disc. I'd put like 18, 20 songs on a disc. And all 18 songs would be, you know, beats that I would make, songs that I would freestyle. Most of the songs I would do, I didn't even really write. I didn't need to write. I could come off the top of the head and people would think, dang, you know, he wrote that. No, I didn't write that. Sometimes I did. A lot of times I didn't. But my passion was doing music. I always was into music. And even when I did music, I wanted my music to be not just like what your modern day rapper is. You know, you just want to make music for what's popular. I made music from the heart. I had a lot of spiritual songs. Well, guess what? That wasn't who I was supposed to be. Who I was supposed to be is what I'm doing right now. I'm singing the real song right now. Okay? So I went from being a, a, a so-called rap musician, so to speak, to a, to a spiritual musician. We're out here singing unto our people, and our people don't even want to listen to us, man. They don't even care. They don't even care. The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. He is my God. And I will prepare him in habitation. My father's power. And I will exalt him. Let's go to 1 Samuels. First Samuel's chapter 16 and verse 23. And it came to pass when the evil spirit from the power was upon Saul, which shows you demons come from the heavenly father, not Satan. OK. That David took an harp. So David took an actual literal harp because David did play the harp. OK. That David took an harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. So the music that David had played took a demon off of Saul. The music you hear today that these people listen to in this world, it puts demons on you, shows you that what you listen to, it does matter, man. It does matter. Why do you think the majority of our people are just so bugged out and lost, just so liberated and being evil because of modern music. A lot of it is just promoting just the, 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 the worst evil that you can think of, man. And a lot of it's promoted by Israelites. So what you listen to matters. In this case, we're speaking spiritually. We're bringing music unto you that's to take the demons out of you. All these other doctrines in this world put demons in you. This is the only doctrine that can cleanse you, that can purify you. Speaking to you Israelites, because this gospel this good news is only for you. It's not for these other nations. It's not for the heathen. And as much as you worry about them, they do not worry about your ass. They're very good actors and actresses. These other nations are not concerned with you Israelites. Okay? The one who truly cares about you, Yahweh Ba Shemmy Shai the habitation of justice, you turn your back on him. You ain't into his music, right? You want to listen to all these different songs that are putting demons on you. But the true doctrine, the true song that we're giving you, you reject that, okay? And it came to pass 
when the evil spirit from the power was upon Saul, that David took an harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. That's beautiful. Ecclesiastes This is the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12 Chapter, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 4. And the doors shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low. And he shall rise up at the voice of the bird. And the daughters of music shall be brought low. So the daughters of music are being brought low. That's why music is at such a very low vibration. That's why rap sales aren't doing as good as they used to do. A lot of music isn't heartfelt anymore. Okay? A lot of music today just promotes just diabolical debauch debauchery, I think is the word. It promotes Satanism. It promotes abomination. Music has been brought to a very, very low level, a very low vibration. The music of today is putting demons on people. And that's also another sifting agent that the Lord uses to prevent people that he doesn't want from coming in. He'll use the media. He'll use entertainment. He'll use different sources to, to flood the minds of you people just to keep you distracted long enough till he destroy you. Okay? The music that David played took demons off you. The music of today puts demons on you. And the door shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low. And a part of that grinding being low also includes the famine of the word. Because right now the doors of repentance is open and we're still on the streets. So the, the Lord's business is still open. But it will come to an end eventually, very soon. The sound of the grinding is low. A lot of businesses are being shut down. Certain places that were once thriving have wood and, and, and nails over it. Okay. And he shall rise up at the voice of the bird and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. And that's why a lot of these musicians, they're not doing as good as they used to do. They're not making hits like they used to. No one's really checking for them like they used to. The star pill is gone. Okay? The Lord is killing a lot of them. And then the music that is coming out it's just so low vibration, there's really no fucking point of listening to it. Okay? A woman will listen to a song to only be influenced to be a whore. To be a single woman, and the woman that's making a song isn't doing any of what she's talking about. That's no different than a studio rapper, a studio gangster, who talks about being a gangster, and he's promoting that at such a level that people believe it and they're influenced to do it only for him to not even know anything about it. The influence is destroying our people and they're falling for the bait. They're falling for the ploy. The song that we're singing, you don't want nothing to do with this. Okay? Amos 5... Amos chapter 5 and verse 23.
Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vials. Because again, music of today is at such a low vibration, the Lord ain't dealing with this shit. You even have Israelites trying to bring music to the ministry, which, you know, that's cool or whatever, but don't try to make it doctrine. The Lord didn't tell us to come and make a hot track and then promote it as, as a way to bring in the elect. That could be one avenue. The primary avenue is what? Come out here and bring out this word. The main song is what? Us teaching the word. If you make music on the side, do your thing. But if you do that, give it, give it out for free. Speak on Bible scriptures. Don't just make a whole album just rhyming and it sounds good. Okay? The work is teach the Bible openly. Not make a rap album and then, you know, go tell people, hey man, go uh go to uh, uh Spotify and check me out, man. I got that, I got that he that Hebrew Israelite fire on deck, bro. No, man. This is what we do. This is how we're reeling in the elect. And if this ain't going to work, it's not for them. The Lord already gave us the blueprint on what to do. And we ain't being extra about it. All right? Another chariot gleaming. They out here, man. Kahala, Yahweh, Ba, Shem, Yahweh, Shai. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vials. But let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. And that's what's happening through the real song. We're out here teaching judgment and righteousness. And this word is that stream of water, man. Okay? Because for too long, the Lord has been listening to the bullshit of this world. Now it's time for you to move out the way and watch his word take effect. Okay? The true song is, is in the building. All right? And it's only for the ears of the elect. Let's touch on the book of Amos. Chapter 6 and verse 7. Therefore now shall they go. That's not what I want. It might be Galatians. Let me try Galatians chapter 6. I think that's what it is. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. Be not deceived. The power is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. In today's music, they don't do nothing but talk about adultery, death, just all evil. Nothing but wickedness, man. They don't promote righteousness. So, seeing that they're promoting all this wickedness, what do you think they're going to reap? Death. You promote death, Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai is going to bring you death. Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 20. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So the song that we sing, we're singing life unto you. But you rather listen to all these other songs instead. You rather listen to death. Okay? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Why do you think Tupac got put to death? Notorious B.I.G. got put to death. Mac Dre got put to death. Fat Tone got put to death. Right? Big L got put to death. You have an abundant list of men who have made music, who were musicians, who got put to death based off of what? The power of the tongue. Them speaking death 
and the Lord brought it upon them. Why? Because you reap what you sow. We're bringing this truth to you, which is life. We're singing life to you. But you want to listen to the other music. Well, you reap what you sow. If you want death, the Lord will give you death. Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 3. And death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue of them that remain of this evil family. So when a man's tongue speaks death, you'll follow that. That's why the majority cannot get with this new song. And death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue of them that remain of this evil family. Speaking of you Israelites. Which remain in all the places whether I have driven them saith the Lord of hosts, okay? So death and life are in the power of the tongue, but the majority of our people are going to choose death, okay? I'm gonna end it here. This is Matthew's chapter 11 and verse 15. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows and saying, we have piped unto you. So if you was to pipe to somebody, if you had like a, uh, like a flute, because a flute looks like a pipe. If you were playing a flute or something, right? Saying, we have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and ye have not lamented. So, we come out here, we're performing. And people don't care. People are not getting down with this groove. People are rejecting this melody. People are like, ah, oh, I, I ain't feeling that, man. That shit's whack. That's how a lot of people treat this ministry. But it's not for them anyway. This is only for the elect of the nation of Israel. And the Lord gave us the internet to help push this word further. Because we're in some times now where people are extremely sleep. So the Lord gave us the internet highway as an extra avenue of getting this word out. Because the majority of people, they don't care about this truth. They don't care about this melody. Okay? And saying we have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. Listen to the cha-cha slide. The niggas literally telling you what to do. And y'all have people listening to the song, and they're just, they're, they're stiff as a statue, man. Okay, back when I used to go out, I'd hit the dance floor, the women come, you know, the women like having fun or whatever, but you always got those niggas just hating on the sideline, right? Just observing. But that's how a lot of you Israelites are with the words of the Lord. You just on the sideline hating, man. Okay? We sing. When we're playing instruments unto you, when we're performing for you, like we're on a stage, we're a spectacle unto you, and you don't even care. Okay? And being ignored, it actually causes the same chemical reaction to your brain as, um, what was it? When you're, what is that, man? I can't think of the chemical. But when you're, but basically when you're ignored, your brain releases the same chemical that it would release if you were injured. So you can only imagine what our brains probably look like dealing with, you know, all the rejection that these people give us, man. But yeah, you can research it. 
When you get rejected, when you get ignored, the brain releases a chemical, the same chemical it would release if you were to receive an injury. And brothers is getting rejected all day. So you know the Lord, man, he going to look out for us. He got our back. So I'm going to go on ahead and close it there. Cherish is out here looking down upon us, brothers. And you sisters as well. I'm going to go on ahead and close it up and give all thanks and praises unto our power, the power of Israel, not the power of any other nation. All right? And what's his name? Yahweh. Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. Shalom.